Hey, Kate. Do you want to hear a mushroom knock knock joke? Sure. And knocky knocky. Oh, It's not funny. Hey guys, Russell Aussie Mushroom Supplies here again. Today we're going to be doing a, we'll call it an instant kit video. You just need some compressed substrate pellets, which is pretty accessible. We've got paper pellets or sawdust pellets. Other things you'll need is uh, some kind of bag, your straw bags, filter bags, buckets will work, anything. There's lots of different types that we sell and you'll see some spawn and hydrated lime. So let's get into it. Bada bing, bada boom. Mixing vessels. It doesn't matter what you got. I've got Old Faithful here that I've had for probably 15 years. It still does the job. Any bucket will work for your mixing. You just have to obviously hand mix with gloves. You can do it anything. Buckets, cement mixes, whatever you got laying around. Rule number one, wear gloves. Step number one, sanitize everything. Whatever's growing on there is gonna grow and outrun the mushroom. I've got some isoprol here. You gotta give it a good drowning and let it air out. As soon as it's dry, we'll shack everything in. Let's go. Bye. You're gonna make sure you get every little bit of it. We're just gonna let that air out for a minute and then we'll start loading our ingredients. Click. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh out. I should probably work out how much I'm gonna weigh. Take 100. If you go to our website, we do have a little step-by-step -step guide if you want to go and read through that. We're gonna do about seven kilos of dry paper pellets. We've got our scales and stuff here. We're gonna weigh out seven kilos worth of pellets. Doesn't have to be 100% precise, but yeah, we'll try and get as close as we can. A full one of those is about 230 grams. So, so one overflowing one's about 250 grams. Now we just gotta do that for seven kilos. Now that we've got our seven kilos of paper pellets in there, we're gonna add our hydrated lime. We need five grams for every liter of water we're gonna use. And we're gonna use 1.5 liters of water for every one kilo of pellets. So we're gonna need 10 and a half liters of water, which is gonna be 53 grams-ish, roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect, but around 50 grams should be enough. This stuff's pretty heavy, so it adds up pretty quick. A bit more. 52. What we're gonna do is just gently sprinkle it over the whole lot with paper pellets. I might mix it around a little bit. And cheat, you ready? It's a little bit dusty, so don't inhale. So now that's all added, don't forget, it doesn't matter your container size. If you have to hand mix it, just make sure your gloves on. Now uh, we'll add the water we need. It helps when you turn the tap on. So now I'm going to add 10 and a half litres of water. I'm cheating, I've got a flow meter, which is leaking. And then just to hydrate everything, so we'll add it slowly, slower the better, and get a nice even mix. So we'll add our 10 and a half litres of water. What we're going to do now is let it sit for five, 10 minutes to soak up all that water, and then we'll come back and add the fungus. Alrighty, now that our paper pellets have had a good soaking, all the water's soaked up and we've had a good mix around, now it's time to add our mushroom spawn. Don't forget to go check out our other videos on mushroom spawn and all the ins and outs you need to know. You want to give it a good mix up. Make sure it's all broken up. You want all the little pieces to be spread through the substrate nice and evenly. Make sure your hands are nice and clean and sterile. Make sure you let the alcohol dry before you touch the spawn. The reason we use seven kilos of dry substrate is because once we add the 10 and a half liters of water, this works at 17 kilos, ensuring that we have a 10% spawn ratio. You can use more pellets to spawn, but it will be slower to grow and slower to fruit. This ratio, it started fruiting in around four weeks. So you want a nice even mix, so the mushroom fungus doesn't have far to colonize everything. So you can go a lot further with your material, so you could do twice the amount of paper pellets to one spawn bag, it'll still grow just fine. But the more you use, the quicker it'll grow and the less problems you have. So now that we've added our mushroom spawn to the mix, now it's time to bag it up. 
So you can use different vessels like your buckets with holes in them. We've got our big giant straw log bags or we've got filter bags. Don't forget to check out our other videos. I've got another explanation video coming soon, which explains all the different bags, pros and cons to each one. But for now, we'll use a big one because obviously we've got a lot of material to bag up, so we'll use that. I've got a bigger container this time, just because obviously it's a lot to scoop, so the bigger, the quicker it's going to be. Every so often, I'll give it a bit of a tap on the ground just to comp compress everything in there. All right, so now we've got a big bag full of our substrate. There's different ways you can close it. A zip tie, sticky tape, gives you something you can hook onto shelves and things like that. So spin it so it's nice and tight. And try and get all the air out. That's what you're trying to achieve, and that's it. Now that we've done that bag, we're going to do a different size one. Doesn't matter what vessel you use, you can do it pretty much with anything. So. All right, now that we've got some substrate in that bag, just with these filter bags, you gotta make sure you don't go too full because we need to have enough airspace for air exchange. So you probably wanna go maybe two thirds up to the filter, otherwise the substrate can't breathe properly. All right, that's probably about two thirds full. We're gonna close this one with a bag sealer. Make sure you get the bag nice and flat. Number one trick, don't let go for a little bit. All right, we've got a little bit of substrate left, so we're just gonna fill some random little bags up that we had laying around the house. Again, you can use anything. It's a delightful mushroom snack. You can see all the spawn through the bag and it's gonna grow through, obviously, once we uh, add some air holes. So we're going to squeeze all the air out. Just going to make it nice and compact. All right, so now we've got these two bags all made and closed, there is no way for the mushrooms to breathe. That's where this tool comes in that we sell on our website. Isoprol everything, let it dry. We call this an air zip maker. You obviously want to add little holes. I'll probably go corner to corner and then go the other side. I sort of go opposite corner and it leaves lots of little holes so the mushrooms can breathe. All right, so we've a little bit of substrate left, so we just went and found whatever we could find laying around the factory just to fill up with the last of the substrate. So I gave it a quick spray with isoprol, we'll top it up and yeah. All right, now that's full. We're gonna do this one a little bit differently and just quite literally leave the lid ajar. And that's how that's gonna breathe, a little gap there. Don't forget, I need to breathe. Leave me open, oh. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now, top 10 tips for this one. Number one, make sure everything's nice and clean before you use it. Number two, five grams of lime per litre of water used. Number three, 10% spawn by weight of substrate. This means if you've got 17 kilos of substrate, 10% is 1.7 kilos, so one spawn bag. You can double this substrate recipe, but it will just take longer to grow and the yields won't quite be the same. Number four, you can use any kind of container or bag. If you're wanting to spread out your fruiting, we suggest using our small Small filter bags this way you can make a smaller bag and you can put them in the fridge because they're sealed and then this will put them to sleep and you can bring them out as you need it for a more consistent supply number five again make sure your containers and tools are clean and give them a quick spray with isoprol just before you use them number six incubate below 20 degrees as the other low tech grows if you can number seven after your first flush you can break up the material and feed it more food so five to ten percent by weight wheat bran you may need to add some more water as well when you do this and this will boost your yields for your your later flushes. Number eight, after one or two 
flushes, you may have to soak it in water, just soak it in cold water overnight, and this will rehydrate the block and any moisture it's lost. Number nine, this works with all of our easy oysters. So have a look at our website. We've got lots of different colors to try. Some have very different tastes, like yellow is a really nice and bright color, and they're a great flavor also. Number 10, don't forget to check out our other videos and keep an eye out for our new ones coming soon. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss all the in-depth guides that are coming soon of all the harder, different methods, which give you a lot better yields. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon. Just a little update on our paper pellets. We made these, it's probably four weeks ago now. Paper pellets are a bit slower because there's not much in the way of nutrients in it. So the nutrients is the spawn you put in. But as you can see, we've got some nice fruits coming out finally of all of our projects. Even the little one's got some little baby fruits coming out of the top. For such an easy process, just check out this little reusable bucket. Little mushrooms for days and they'll get bigger. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our other videos because there's gonna be some awesome stuff coming soon. See ya.